Find a comfortable seat on your mat. You can sit in any position so long as that spine is nice and tall. However you choose to sit, be sure to pull the flesh away from those sit bones so that you're starting with a nice solid foundation. Start to draw the navel in towards the spine and allow the crown of the head to reach towards the sky. So you can imagine you're creating space between each of the vertebrae. Bring your shoulder blades together and down the back. Place the hands on the thighs, palms down, and close your eyes. Start to become aware of your breath. And you can just allow the breath to flow in through the nose and out through the nose. Just starting to bring your awareness inward, tuning out any distractions. and allowing yourself to be here in this moment. Start to bring your breath into balance by making the inhale the same length as the exhale. So if your inhale is for a count of four, your exhale would be for a count of four. If your inhale is for a count of six, the exhale would be for a count of six and so on. So your rate of breathing could be different from everyone else and that's perfectly fine. So I've noticed that my anxiety level has really been through the roof this past week. And I have been um, sort of searching to figure out why, like why all of a sudden is it so much worse? And I think there's a couple of reasons for myself personally. I had a vacation that I was looking forward to, but that's past now. And I think for the first time ever since I've been married, I have no vacations on the horizon, I start to feel a little trapped. Also, we have an election coming and people are very vocal and we, um, we have a very easy time seeing everyone's views and opinions with social media. So I think that starts to wear on me a little bit. And then I remember, oh yeah, we're also in the middle of a pandemic still, so there's that. So I think it's kind of normal that our anxiety levels might be starting to increase. So what I've been doing and what I invite you to do is I have been really taking an active effort to do things and plan things that I know will help me to keep my anxiety down. Um, like I said, I have no vacations planned on the horizon. That's something that our family just lives for. We love to travel. So I am going to be scheduling myself just for a three hour online yoga training. You know, it's something I can look forward to. My sister and I are making an effort to hang out together because we are in a bubble. We're really just hanging out with family because um, we have some family members with, uh, I forget what you call it, underlying medical conditions or whatever. Anyway, I'm rambling. My point is we can take, we can still take charge. Even if all of this stuff is really weighing us down and starting to get to us, we can take control. If you're feeling good, take the time to just write down a few things that bring you joy, things that you can continue to do, even though we're in a pandemic. And that might help you to uh, be able to let go of some of the tension and anxiety that this time brings. Today, we're going to do a little practice called 10 seconds to center, because this is something else that you can do if you're caught up in an anxious moment and it's simple, it takes 10 seconds um, and you can do it anywhere. So we'll do that now. 
So all you're going to do is place the left hand on your belly and the right hand on your chest. And as you inhale, you'll feel the belly rise, followed by the chest. And as you exhale, feel the chest fall, followed by the belly. Inhale, belly rises, followed by the chest. Exhale, chest falls, followed by the belly. Eight more breaths on your own. And when you finish, you can just place the hands on the thighs. Bring the hands together at the heart in Anjali Mudra. We'll breathe together three times and on the third exhale, share the sound of home. Take a deep breath in through the nose. Exhale through the nose. Inhale. And exhale. And for the third time together, inhale. Oh. Bow your head. Place the hands on the thighs. Softly open your eyes, looking forward. So today we're going to start in child's pose. So to get there, you can just come to all fours, hands and knees, and then shift the hips to the heels, the chest to the thighs, coming to child's pose. And you can just rest the elbows on the mat, maintain awareness of the balanced breath. Today's class will focus on forward bends, which are said to be cooling and calming. Relax. On your next inhale, come up to all fours, hands and knees. Make sure that hands are just shoulder width apart. They're slightly forward of your shoulders. Knees are hip width apart and they are slightly behind the hips. What did I say? Knees are hip width apart. That's what I meant to say. Take a breath in. As you exhale, shift the hips to the heels, the chest to the thighs, coming to extended child's pose. So those elbows stay up off of the mat. As you inhale, come back up. All fours. Exhale, back to child's pose. Inhale, up. All fours. So you're going to continue to move with the breath, just moving in and out of child's pose. The 
next time you come to child's pose, pause there. You're going to move your knees back. So you end up in a modified plank position. Take a breath in as you exhale, shift back. And then as you inhale, you'll come back up to that modified plank pose. So you'll start to feel the core engage and that's when you know you're in that, you've, you've come forward far enough. Then we exhale back, inhale, modified plank pose. back to all fours, bringing those knees back to the tabletop position. Step your right foot back and you're going to stretch through the heel. As you inhale, come forward up onto the toes. Exhale, shift back, reaching through the heel. You should feel a nice stretch in the back of that right leg as you shift back. Inhale, move forward. Exhale, shift back. Shift back one more time on that right side. And then you'll step your right knee back to meet the left, coming back to all fours tabletop. Extend that left leg out behind, toes are on the floor, reach through the heel as you shift back. Bring yourself forward. Exhale, shift back, reach through the left heel. Inhale, come forward, four more on your own. And then you'll bring that left knee back to meet the right. Take a moment to shift back to child's pose here. On the inhale, come back up to all fours, hands and knees. You're going to extend through the right heel, reaching that right foot back. And then you're going to add the left. So we're going to end up in a plank pose. Float forward here, navel to your spine. Take a breath in as you exhale, shift the body back, reaching through both heels. Inhale, back to plank. Exhale, shift back. Inhale, forward. Three more. When you finish, you're going to keep those um, heels reaching behind you, lower the knees to your modified plank pose, and then shift back to child's pose. Rest here. Come back to the balanced breath if it's gotten away from you. If they're not already, extend those arms out in front of you, elbows up off of the mat. Take a breath in and as you exhale, start to walk your hands out to the left as you bow out those right ribs. If you'd like, you can place the right hand on top of the left hand. So here you're going to reach your right hip towards the back of the room to deepen that stretch. Start to walk your hands back to center. And on the next exhale, 
you'll walk your hands out to the right, bowing out the left ribs. You can place that left hand on top of the right and then press the left hip back. Start to walk your hands back to center. Bring yourself up to all fours, hands and knees. So just double check your foundation here. Hands are shoulder width apart, slightly forward of your shoulders. Knees are hip width apart, slightly behind the hips, navel to the spine. Sweep the right arm towards the sky. As you exhale, that right arm sweeps back down as you thread the needle through that left arm, left side body. So the right side of the head and the right arm are on the ground here. <clears throat> you wanna make sure to keep the weight out of your neck. So you can keep your left hand where it is if you'd like, or begin to twist towards the left and then reach the left arm towards the sky. Breathe here. Lower the left hand to the mat. You'll press the floor away, bringing yourself back up, up to all fours, hands and knees. On the next inhale, the left arm sweeps up towards the sky. As you exhale, it sweeps back down as you thread the needle through the right arm, right side body. Left shoulder, left side of the head come to the mat. You can keep the right arm where it is or begin to twist a little more to the right as you reach the arm towards the sky. Lower the right hand to the mat, press the floor away, come back to all fours, hands and knees. From here, we're going to move into downward facing dog. So you can curl your toes under, start to shift the hips towards your heels. Your knees lift just a little bit as you press back through those heels, coming to Adho Mukha Svanasana, downward facing dog. Bend both of the knees here, keep them bent. Shift the hips to the back of the room where the wall meets the ceiling and then begin to relax the heels towards the mat. Start to bend the knees, go back to go back down into child's pose. As you inhale, bring yourself back up to all fours, hands and knees. We'll do that again. Curl the toes under. Start to shift the hips towards the heels. Knees lift as you press back, downward facing dog. Start to walk the feet forward towards your hands, coming to Uttanasana, forward fold. Relax the head and neck here. So we really want our hands on the ground here for a sense of being grounded. Now that's not possible for everyone. So you can actually bend your knees if you'd like to, play, to get those hands closer to the floor, or you can put your hands on top of blocks or something else to bring the floor closer to you. Place your hands on your hips, press down through the feet, and then bring yourself back up. And we'll stand in Tadasana at the top of the mat. We're going to begin to move into Sun Salutation A. And we'll start off slow, and then we'll work up to speed. Now, Sun Salutations can be quite vigorous. So you can modify however you need to. On my YouTube channel, there is a sun salutation using a wall that you can check out um, and see if you like that, if this is a bit much for you. So we stand in Tadasana Mountain Pose. 
on the inhale, the arms sweep up. Exhale, hinge from the hips, folding forward. Fingertips come down to the ground. As you inhale, bring yourself halfway up, flat back. As you exhale, fold forward. You're going to step your right foot back, followed by the left, and you can absolutely lower the knees here if you'd like. Inner elbows, look at the space in front of you. And then start to bend the elbows towards the space behind you as you lower for chaturanga. Sweep the chest through the arms, rising to cobra pose or baby cobra with those bent elbows. Draw the navel in, curl the toes under, and you're going to shift back to downward facing dog, Adho Mukha Svanasana. Start to step your feet forward, coming to Uttanasana, forward fold. Press down through those feet, arms start to lift. Once the arms are aligned with the ears, use the core, bring yourself all the way up. As you exhale, hands come to your heart. Inhale, arms sweep up. Exhale, hinge from the hips, folding forward. As you inhale, bring yourself up halfway. On the exhale, fold. Step the feet back to plank, <clears throat> knees up or down. If the knees are up, float forward to the tops of the toes first, and then begin to bend those elbows. Sweep the chest through the arms, rising to Bhujangasana. Curl the toes under, shift back and rest. So here you can take down dog or child's pose. It's an opportunity for you to come back to the breath, come back to the present moment. And we'll start to walk the feet forward coming to your forward fold, Uttanasana. Press down through the feet, arms start to lift. Once the arms are in line with the ears, bring yourself all the way up. On the exhale, hands come to your heart. Inhale, arms sweep up. Exhale, fold forward, hinging from those hips. As you inhale, come halfway up. And on the exhale, fold forward. Hands come to the mat, feet step back to plank. Knees are up or down. Hug the elbows in close to the body as you lower for chaturanga. Sweep the chest through the arms, rising to Bhujangasana Cobra Pose. Curl your toes under, shift back, downward facing dog. Step the feet forward, coming to Uttanasana, forward fold. Press down through the feet, arms start to lift. Once they're in line with the ears, use the core all the way up. Exhale, hands come to your heart. Inhale, arms sweep up. Exhale, hinge forward. As you inhale, bring yourself up halfway. As you exhale, hinge. Step the feet back to plank. Hug the elbows in. Slowly lower, chaturanga. Sweep the chest through the arms. Curl the toes under. Shift back and rest. Down dog or child's pose. Either is fine here. Remember that the inhale and exhale are equal in length, equal in volume. Start to walk the feet forward, Uttanasana, forward fold. Press down through the feet, arms start to lift. Once they're in line with the ears, use that core all the way up. Exhale, hands come to your heart. Inhale, arms sweep up. Exhale, fold forward. As you inhale, bring yourself up halfway. 
As you exhale, hinge from those hips. Step those feet back to plank, knees up or down, your choice. Hug those elbows in, slowly lower. Sweep the chest through the arms, rise to Bhujangasana. Curl your toes under, shift back, Adho Mukha Shwanasana. Step the feet forward, Uttanasana. Press down through the feet, inhale, arms all the way up. Exhale, hands to heart. Inhale, arms sweep up. Exhale, hinge from the hips, folding forward. As you inhale, come up halfway. And as you exhale, hinge. Step back to plank. Hug the elbows in close to the body. Lower down, chaturanga. Sweep the chest through the arms, rising to bhujangasana. Curl your toes under. Shift back. Rest here. Start to walk the feet forward towards the hands, coming to Uttanasana, forward fold. Really relax the head and neck here. You can gently turn the head from side to side. Press down through your feet, arms start to lift. Once the arms are aligned with the ears, use the core, come all the way up. As you exhale, Bring your hands together at your heart. So we stand in Tadasana, Mountain Pose. On the inhale, arms steep up. And as you exhale, hinge forward, Uttanasana. On your inhale, come up halfway. So this is Arda Uttanasana, half forward fold. Arda means half. So I get my um, arch in my back here. So I'm just going to tuck my tailbone slightly. My back is parallel to the mat. Feet pressing into the floor, crown of the head reaching to the space in front of you. Press down through those feet, extend those arms out in line with those ears. Use the core, bring yourself all the way up. Exhale, hands to heart. Inhale, arms sweep up. Exhale, hinge from the hips, folding forward. This time we're going to grab opposite elbows and just let the trunk of the body sway naturally. Release your elbows. Place the hands on the mat and we'll step back to downward facing dog. From here, you'll sweep that right leg out behind you and then step the right foot forward between the hands. And if you need to pick the leg up and move it, that's fine too. Here, you're going to root down through the sole of your left foot, toes point out to the left slightly. The right knee bends, and on the inhale, arms sweep up as you come up to Warrior One, Virabhadrasana One. In this pose, your hips do not have to be perfectly square towards the front of the room. Just subtly pull the right hip back, left hip forward. Arms are strong and active, or hands can be on the hips. Root down through the outer edge of the back foot. As you inhale, straighten the right leg. And then as you exhale, you're going to reach out and hinge from those hips, folding forward, bringing your hands down to the ground or on blocks that would be on either side of your right foot. Relax the head and neck here. Come up on the ball of your left foot. You're going to Step back to downward facing dog here. 
Now you can stay in down dog or flow through the vinyasa with me. To flow with me, you'll float forward to plank. Hug the elbows in, slowly lower. Sweep the chest through the arms, rising to Bhujangasana. Curl the toes under, shift back, downward facing dog. From here, sweep the left leg out behind you. You can step that foot forward between the hands or pick it up and move it. Root down through the sole of that right foot, right toes point out slightly, left knee is bent. On the inhale, arms sweep up. Virabhadrasana one, warrior one. Subtle, pulling back of the left hip, reaching forward with the right. Making sure the left knee doesn't jut out past your ankle here. On the inhale, straighten the left leg. As you exhale, reach out, make your spine as tall as you can as you hinge from those hips, folding forward. Relax the head and neck here. Come up on the ball of that right foot. We'll step back to downward facing dog. Again, you can stay here or float forward to plank. Slowly lower for chaturanga. Sweep the chest through the arms, rising to bhujangasana. Curl your toes under, shift back, down dog. Step the feet forward, coming to Uttanasana. Forward fold, relax the head and neck here. You can gently turn that head from side to side. Place the hands on the hips, press down through the feet, and bring yourself up to standing. So again, we will stand in Tadasana Mountain Pose. As you inhale, arms sweep up. As you exhale, begin to bend the knees as if you're just sitting on the edge of a chair. Take a breath in and as you exhale, slide the hips back in your chair. So make sure the knees aren't jutting out past your ankles here or past your toes. Focus on your breath. Press down through the feet, bring yourself up. As you exhale, hinge from those hips, folding forward. Inhale, come up halfway. Exhale, fold forward. Place the hands on the hips, Press down through the feet to bring yourself up to standing. Inhale, arms sweep up. Exhale, bend the knees, sit on the edge of your chair. Take a breath in as you exhale, slide those hips back. So we really don't wanna feel this pose in our knee at all. Um, if you have a block, you can place that block between the knees and really squeeze it. And that will help to activate the leg muscles and get the weight out of those knees. Breathe here. Press down through the feet, bring yourself up. As you exhale, hinge from the hips, folding forward, Uttanasana. From here, we're going to step back to downward facing dog. And one more time, you've got that option. You can just stay in down dog or float forward to plank. Hug the elbows in. Slowly lower. Sweep the chest through the arms. Curl the toes under. Shift back, down dog. From here, you're going to begin to bend the knees. Go back to go back down into child's pose and rest. So you can place your arms and hands wherever it's comfortable for you, wherever it feels restful. Come back to that balanced breath.
and then we'll come back up to all fours, hands and knees. From all fours, you'll take a breath in. As you exhale, round the spine towards the sky. On the inhale, the belly draws down towards your mat as the bottom of the head reaches towards the sky. Exhale, round the spine. Inhale, belly draws down. and come back to a neutral neck, neutral spine. We're going to come down to sitting in Dandasana or staff pose. So you'll just sit with those legs extended out nice and long and adjust your sit bones as needed. In Dandasana, we reach through the heels, but oftentimes the heels will pop up. We don't wanna do that. Make sure the heels are on the ground because when the heels pop up, you might be hyperextending your knees. Bend your left knee, place the foot on the floor. Take the left hand behind your left hip. Nice tall spine here, make sure you're not leaning back. Wrap your right arm around the left knee. So here we're going to press down through the sit bones. As you inhale, create length in the spine. And then as you exhale, you'll begin to twist to the right. You can stay just like this, or to take it deeper, and it is an option, you can take your right elbow to the outside of that left knee. Press down through the sit bones. Inhale, grow tall. On the exhale, you'll bring yourself back to center, and then let this left knee open up out to the left. So if you have any issues with your back, seated forward bends really need to be done very mindfully. Um, I've created a lot more stability in my spine since I've been teaching for so long and practicing. But when I was newly teaching, my sacrum was in so much pain all the time because I was taking my forward bends way too deep taking my spine beyond its normal range of motion. So we really want to be mindful because if we do forward bending and round that spine too much, you can get disc material coming out of the, the back of the um, vertebrae because you're taking it way beyond its normal range of motion. So seated forward bends may look easy, but that ego can really get involved and we need to just not listen to it because it doesn't matter how far we get down to the ground. So on your inhale, arms sweep up. And actually, one thing I forgot to say, you can keep a bend in this outstretched leg. On the exhale, hinge forward. So if you really wanna grab your toes and you can't reach, bend the knee. And then you can start to straighten it and maybe you get to a point where you're like, okay, that's good for me. Just breathe here. Start to walk your hands back up towards your body. Extend your left leg long to meet the right and bend the right knee. So we're reaching through the left heel. Spine is nice and tall. Right hand comes behind the right hip. Left arm wraps around that right knee. Press down through the sit bones. Inhale, grow tall. As you exhale, begin to twist to your right. Keep reaching through the left heel here. If you'd like to take it deeper, you can take the left elbow to the outside of the right knee. Root down through the sit bones. Inhale, grow tall. As you exhale, bring yourself back to center. You're going to let that right knee open up out to the right and go ahead and just bend the left leg a little bit here. As you inhale, arms sweep up. Exhale, hinge from the hips, folding forward. 
So bend your knees so much so that you can hold on to that foot. Then you can just start to straighten it as much as you can without starting to feel a lot of uh, pulling in that low back. Slowly start to bring yourself back up. And you'll extend your right leg long to meet the left. Next, we're going to take the legs out like a V, adjusting the sit bones as needed and flexing the feet. Again, you want those heels on the ground. Nice, tall spine. Inhale, arms sweep up. Exhale, hinge from the hips so we're not bending the back. Or just hinging, and then you're going to get to a point where you're like, oh, I can't go any further. Bring the hands down to the mat. As you inhale, create length in the spine. As you exhale, hinge from those hips. So years ago, I was at a yoga training with Gary Crafso, who's an amazing uh, yoga instructor, yoga therapist, um, and there was a girl, we were doing this pose and there was a girl in the class who would just very easily go all the way down to her belly outstretched. And we were all just amazed. And Gary said to her, are you feeling any stretch at all? And she said, no. And that's because her ligaments were obviously very long. So she actually was so flexible that she had to modify this pose just to feel anything. So she practiced it with bent legs. And my point in telling you that is that we all thought this woman who could just lay flat on the floor here was just, oh my gosh, she's such an amazing yogi, which she was, but she was getting no benefit from that pose at all. So she had to modify because she was so flexible. So don't ever feel like you need to get down on the ground. You don't. Start to walk the hands back towards the body. You're going to bring those legs back to Dandasana, staff pose. Bend the knees and let the soles of the feet come together as the knees open up out to the side. So for some of us, when we sit like this, the knees are way up and that's indicative of, of tight hips. It might be because you sit a lot. It might be because you're a runner and runners tend to have tight hips. Press down through the sit bones, inhale, grow tall. If it's okay for you, begin to hinge from those hips, just as far as is comfortable. Slowly bring yourself back up. And we're going to come to lay on our backs and hug the knees into the chest. So we find ourselves in Apanasana. You can hug the knees in, rock gently from side to side here. Apanasana, also a forward fold. It's basically child's pose turned upside down. Become still. Bring the arms out like a T and press the soles of the feet up towards the sky. Begin to rotate the ankles. and then reverse the direction of that ankle rotation. So let those feet become still. We're gonna flex the feet and notice that we are basically in Dandasana, we're just flipped around a little bit. So you're pressing through the soles of the feet, crown of the head, reaching to the space behind it, watching the breath. Start to lower the feet towards your mat. When they're about two inches away from the ground, you'll draw the knees into the chest. Press the soles of the feet up towards the sky. Slowly lower those legs until they're about two inches from the ground and repeat. If you start to feel this in the low back, make sure you're pressing that low back into the mat. And then if you still feel it, you can alternate um, leg lifts here as an option or as a modification. Okay. 
The next time you draw the knees into the chest, you can pause there, place the right hand on the right knee, left hand on the left knee. As you inhale, the knees pull away from the chest as the arms straighten. As you exhale, draw the knees. Inhale, knees pull away. Exhale, draw the knees in. Continue moving with the breath. In and out, apanasana. Hug those knees into the chest once more. And then place the soles of the feet on the mat. Let the soles of the feet come together as those knees open up out to the side. Place the left hand on the belly and the right hand on the chest. As you inhale, feel the belly rise. And as you exhale, feel the belly fall. Inhale, belly rises, followed by the chest. Exhale, chest falls, followed by the belly. Eight more breaths on your own. When you finish, you'll extend those legs out nice and long and bring the arms by your sides, palms face the sky. Let the arms be a few inches away from the body and allow the feet to just flop open. Relax the jaw by creating a space between the top and bottom rows of teeth and let the tongue fall away from the roof of the mouth. Let the eyes just rest in their sockets. Resist the urge to make subtle movement. Allow the natural breath to take over. Rest in Shavasana.
slowly start to deepen the breath, becoming aware of the space around you and becoming aware of your body. Start to make any subtle movements that feel good to you. You can wiggle the fingers, you can wiggle the toes, turn the head gently from side to side, and then stretch through the arms and the legs like you're just waking up. And then roll to the right side, and we'll stay there in the fetal position for a few breaths. Keeping the eyes closed, if you'd like, you can use the arms to bring yourself back up to a comfortable seated position facing me, and then bring the hands together at the heart. There go those church bells again, right on time. So if you were here the other day, we talked about um, using church bells or other things as a way to remind you to come back to the breath. So let's go ahead and do it and use these church bells as a reminder for us to come back to that balanced breath, back to the present moment. Just another way to help get us through particularly anxious times. Thank you so much for sharing your practice with me this morning. Thank you for working through forward bends as a way to calm us, to cool us down. And I invite you or encourage you to really think about it, even write down a few things that you can do if you have a day where it just all becomes overwhelming then pull that list out and see, oh yeah, these are the things that help me to calm. Because sometimes we're, when we're in that moment, we cannot think of those things. So if you have it written down, you can just pull it out and be like, oh yeah, there's my formula. You can always pull up a YouTube class too. Just do a yoga practice, see if that helps. May you be happy, may you be peaceful. May you be free from suffering. May you have ease and well-being. Namaste. Thank you.